You are listening to the urban sports scene with Wole and Ray on Empire Media. That's empiremedia.com. It's now time for HBCU Corner. And right now, we have guard Chase Davis from our alma mater, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore men's basketball team. And Chase also, Wole, is from PG County, baby. So he's good with us. Chase, yeah. welcome to HBCU Corner with the urban sports scene. It's good to have you, bro. I appreciate you having me. I appreciate it. Hey, man, thanks for being on. We, we talked about it a little bit before we started recording, but you are from the county, and you yeah, played sure. with Angelo, I mean, Coach Angelo, Team Durant, man. How was that experience playing with him and, and knowing his, record, his, his resume as a coach in the area? Oh, uh, no, a coach, he definitely, you know, made, made me who the player I am today. You know, we, that was the 16 year. That's when we had Jordan Hawkins, who's in the NBA now. You know, we, we had a lot of – we had Rodney Rice that's with Virginia Tech. So, you know, we had a lot of great players on that team. You know, he managed to, you know, coach all of us, you know, figure out a way to, you know, for all of us to play with each other. So he definitely made me who, I, who the player I am today and gave me that, you know, that strong mindset, you know, because it's not easy being a coach, you know, Coach Hernandez. You know, he treats you like you're already in college. So, you know, that was definitely a challenge for me. But I got through it, and he definitely helped me mentally and on and off the court with Coach so. I definitely appreciate Coach Hernandez um, in my basketball career. Yeah, shout out to Coach Hernandez, man. Shout out to him. All right, so we're going to talk, you know, Ray and I, we used to, you know, we used to be in student, we used to do, a, I ain't going to say student security, we used to do that too, but uh, we used to, <laughs> used to be at homecoming uh, often. And we was working student security for homecoming, but I want to ask you a particular question, you know, you, we used to get kind of geeked for like a, a go-go band coming to the, to the shore for homecoming. Is there any go-go band going perform for homecoming this year? Oh, uh, no, I mean, it's a different generation now. So I'm not <laughs> sure if it's, it's go-go bands, you know, I'm not sure if there's go-go bands um, going on as of right now. But, you know, we got concerts. We be having, you know, you know these celebrities, you know, coming, you know, performing uh -huh. songs. So, you know, that's really, you know, we had Lil Dirk my freshman year last year. We had, you know, uh, no cap come here. So, you know, they'll be having good rappers come here and perform for homecoming for, you know, school and everything. So, hey, well, like, you, you don't know who no cap is, do you? Not at all, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no. I know T.I., you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? What you know fuck, about bro. that? Since, since I don't smoke no more, I can't really listen to like no cap. And, uh, <laughs> and like, you know what I'm saying? KP, because I mean, like, yeah, you, you got to be in a certain mindset to listen to them, bro. But, uh, well, when we was in school, though, man, I don't know if you go to parties down there, but like 80% of the band music list was go-go, bro. Like, it was it was terrible. You know what I'm saying? We got discriminated. They thought we caused fights at the time. So that's how they, that's how they treated us. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, there's no more go-go down here, though. I, I'm not going to say go-go for homecoming. No more. That definitely had ran out of style, I guess. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> for, hey. for, for, home, for performing at homecomings, I'm not saying it's our style back home. But yeah, for, yeah. Performing at homecomings, you know, they don't really do it. So, so the, in terms of the game, I'm sure y'all get up for that because that's one of the biggest games of the year where everybody's oh, yeah, back. Yeah, most definitely, you know, having the alumni come, it's a whole bunch of fans, you know, all the bleachers are pulled out. It's, it's definitely the most, you know, exciting, you know, home game, I would say, until, you know, we get the playoffs during MEAC play, but I definitely would say it's definitely the most exciting game because you just seeing people you've never seen before and then the, uh. the stands is packed out you got you know you got the band playing you got cheerleading at halftime so you know it's just it's just great vibe great energy you know everybody's having a good time you know that's what you know homecoming is about especially for hbcu uh. oh most definitely and i want to ask you first i guess in talking about um just the atmosphere when you have a homecoming crowd like that what does that do for the team in terms of energy? You want to oh, perform, most, sure. most definitely gets us hyped up. Because, you know, we're already <laughs> hyped up because you already think in our head it's a lot of fans coming. So we're already hyped up, you know, get excited. But, you know, once you get out there, you're like, oh, man. Like, you, you feel like you're in an arena. You know, you feel like you're in an arena. So it's definitely, you know, it's definitely a vibe, you know, like no other. You know, that's what I love about the HBCU culture. You know, they come out to, you know, support, you know, games. And it's always just a different – you know, environment that, you know, nobody else will get at, like, you know, a PWI or you know, mm. high middle school. So it's just different. Yeah, Coach Crabden, he gets you all up to play anyway, especially on oh, defense, most definitely, man. Most definitely. I, I love the mentality. And something that drove Coach Crabden was uh, y'all being picked last by Sports Illustrated a few seasons ago. Oh. And that was the – I think that was the year coming off the COVID. There was no season your freshman year. Mm. Uh, play UConn tough. 
won more games than what people predicted and was just, hey, a tough, gritty team, bro. You played all all, all the teams you played tough, especially the bigger schools, though. I think y'all played Duke that season, too. Am I yeah, right? We played, we played Duke last year. We played Duke last year. Oh, that was last year. Okay, my bad. But uh, yeah. regardless, at the time, it was almost like a brand new roster playing together. Um, you expect this team to kind of come together like that this year, considering there's a lot of new guys yeah. on the team? Most definitely. You know, and, and I would say, you know, freshman year, um, you know, I remember, you know, everybody was in the locker room, you know, coach, you know, said, you know, everybody in the locker room, we go, we all go in the locker room, you know, we just finished practice, you know, we all look at our, he said, look at our phones. And he sent us a link of us being picked last, you know, that was my first year here. And that was the first year they they just coming off the, you know, the COVID year. So that kind of really drove us, you know, to where our culture is right now, you know, that, that, that that kind of like really motivated us that that first year when I was here, you know, that we got to change the culture out here because, you know, we, we, we didn't believe that we should have been picked last, of course. But, you know, that that really drove us and, you know, it, it's helping us, you know, go step by step in building this program of UMS basketball. So, you know, I kind it was a it was a good thing and it was a bad thing at the same time that we seen that we was picked last. So, you know, it, it, you know we progress and, you know, we change the culture and now we're not last no more. So, you know, we just got to keep <laughs> going. <laughs> Right. Most definitely. Uh, what I want to ask you guys, I'm going to ask you about, oh, um, you kind of sound like a veteran already, bro. Uh, mm -hmm. How are you settling into that role as basically being a, a, a leader on the team and somebody who's been there experienced? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just been looking at the guys that who were leaders that were before me. You know, we had my freshman year. It was um, people like, you know, Sean that played with us. Sean, Deshaun Filler that's at mm -hmm. um, Sean, you know, yeah. right now that played here. We had Nate Pollard who's playing overseas right now. I, you know, I just look at the guys, you know, trying to just – I was just soaking in all the, you know um, – you know, leadership qualities that they were getting in. And I'm also in contact with Haywood Highsmith, who's always, you know, really that place for the Miami Heat, who's close with Crafted, you know, mm. who I, I'm really mm. close with. I've been asking him, you know, just soaking in information to get, to, to be the best leader I can be for this team, you know, in order for us to keep making steps, you know, to change this program around. So, you know, I've just been soaking it in. You know, it's it's definitely difficult, but, you know, I'm accepting the challenge and, you know, I'm, I'm continuing to grow and trying to be a leader. So Yes, sir. As a leader, you have expectations, right? So, you know, you, you already mentioned you already mentioned the players that, you know, you've lost, but you kind of could use them as like tools to grow, you use them as tools to be able to become a better leader. But so what are your expectations for the new crop, the players, behind, the players below you in terms of, you know, experience? Oh, uh, you know, we got a lot of new guys and I, I honestly would say this, this might be the one of the biggest, you know, athletic teams that UMS ever had. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, you know, to see, you know, uh, uh, you know, freshman year, you know, a whole bunch of new guys. Then last year, it's the same team. And then this year, you know, getting a whole bunch of new guys. You know, just I just, just – they're, they're tough guys. And, you know, I like the new guys that craft the ball. That, you know, he, he chooses, you know, very strategically on who he recruits. And I believe these guys are going to get it done. You know, we, like any other teams, a bunch of new guys, will, of course, we want to hit adversity. But, you know, we're working through it. And I believe this team, we're going to do something special this year. So – more athletic, more athletic than last year's team. You had some athletic dudes last year too. Yeah, we did. Yes, we that's, did. I, I honestly say we 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 are more athletic this year. That's that's tough. All right. Hey, so you for, had Nate Zion. Uh, yeah. Y'all had some athletic. They had some athletic dudes, bro. They had some athletic, yeah. for real, real talk. So that, that's so, real. I mean, so what? So what? So in terms of the all season, you know, you you from the county, you know, we got yes. we got we got stuff in our bags, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you know. So so what? What have you worked? In, what what did you work on in the all season to add to that toolbox? Um, you know, one of the things was for me, I would say is you know getting getting stronger. I feel like you know as a you know division one guy, I was I feel like a little little underweight. So me just getting stronger, be able to take, you know, the, the bumps, you know, body control. So that's really what I've been working on is getting strong, getting bigger and working on, you know, my, my, my weight and everything. So that's, that's really what I've been working on this summer. So, you know, stay tuned. So stay oh, tuned. Uh, <laughs> you, you taught, you, you taught your team about the, the PG Hesse. Yeah, 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 they know about it. They, they know about the DMV. They know, they know we got these come with the best guys. They know. Okay, as long as they know. As long, long as they know, DMV got the best athletes. Everybody know that. You know it, bro. You know it. All right, so speaking of getting stronger, Coach Kraft did something cool. He took y'all to a to a boxing gym in the east in on the Eastern Shore as a team exercise. How was that experience, and what did y'all gain from that experience? 
oh my, um, I love that experience. You know, it was it was just new for the program. That's something that you know UMS has never done was you mm-hmm. know a boxing workout. You know, you you see basketball, some basketball programs do you know boxing workouts during the summer, but you know not a lot. And you know, I really loved it. You know, we had a good coach. He was pushing us. He was motivating us, and it was just it was just great work. It, it just it teaches you to be mentally focused also. Because, you know, during the season, it's not all about being physical. You got to be mentally focused as well mm-hmm. when playing the game of basketball. So that that really helped us as a team. And it was good team bonding, you know, mm-hmm. you know going through adversity with your teammates. So, you know, I really love the, the boxing exercise that we did this summer. It's definitely going to help us down the road during the season. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I saw it. I was like, oh, snap. OK, yeah. <laughs> that's different. That, that, that is. <laughs> And we, we talked to Coach Crafton all the time, but the last time he came on this platform with us, it was right after the upset at Temple. Mm-hmm. And when we asked him about that, he was like, it's, it's one-way culture, bro. Yeah, so talk sure. about one-way culture and what that means to you and your teammates. Um, that 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 that's our culture, like that. That's our why, you know. One way, you know, everything's together. We go, we go through this together. We go through adversity together. We win together. We lose together. You know, everything is just one way. So I mean, that that culture has been super big, you know, for this program. And I feel like that Timber game really kind of it showed us people more like what we can do together. Because yeah, I just, I just remember that during that we were just all locked in, you know, Temple. They had chains on, warming up, you know, laughing when we coming out. So I just felt like we was focused. You know, we just got the job done. And like we said, one way, we won together. Like everybody had played a part in that um, upset we did um, over Temple. Bro, I don't cry that often as an adult. I'm just being real. Like, I get emotional, but I don't, I don't let tears come on my eyes too much. But if you and me has ever makes the NCAA tournament, that's the one day you might see me cry, bro. So <laughs> if, 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 you <laughs> that happen, if, you, if you do that for me, bro, what would that mean for you, you know, really being yeah, the was... first team in history of the university to, to make the NCAA tournament, bro? That would be dope. Um, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, that, that would mean the world to me, especially being the first team in history to ever make uh, the tournament, you know, that's something that um, will be set in stone for history, even, you know, through, throughout life for my family, like everybody's going to be able to see that. So that would, it honestly would mean a lot to me um, because I know, you know, in college, college athletes work hard, you know, when you get an accomplishment that you've been working so hard for, it's, just, it's, it's speechless. So that's, that's how I would feel if, you know, we, we'd be the first team to ever uh, get, be able to make it to the NCAA tournament. So other than yourself, could you and to, for that goal to be accomplished, what are some of the players you're gonna have to lean on for that to happen? Oh, um, well, uh, I, I honestly would say I got you know three players. Mm-hmm. I would say you know I, one way it's just every as a team, the whole yes, team, team. Cool. You know, it's all of us. But it's, it's three players that in particular that I feel like that have that I've seen grow since last year. Um, that really gonna play a big part that people didn't really get to see a lot last year because you know of course we had nine seniors. I would say. Uh, DJ, uh, the, the Deontay Johnson, point guard, you know, mm-hmm. he's sophomore. I've seen him grow and he's being a leader. You know, I, I'm really, really looking forward to see what he got coming to the play. You know, Toby, another freshman last year. He got uh, he got freshman of the league one time last week. Just seeing these little glimpses, seeing them grow and how, you know, I feel like Toby can be a big, you know, energy guy for us, like another Zion, if, if I would say, you know, I would describe Toby. So, you know, that he's really going to play a big time. And every, people seeing glimpses of Troy Hupstead. Um, yes. as the third player, you know, everybody know how, yeah, we, dog, how yeah, yeah, dog, yeah. so I would say those three players that definitely I can lean on this season that I know that would definitely be ready and I've been working hard and I've seen work hard, you know, as two of them were freshmen last year and they got a big role stepping up as a sophomore, as you know, me and Troy, we're juniors, we're a little older, mm-hmm. so we kind of see the game differently, so I, I, I would say those are the three players that stick out to me and that mm-hmm. are going to make an impact this season that people haven't heard about. Cool. So, what, so what, what, what about some of the newbies that caught your eye? We just like, okay, wow. Uh, wow. I, <laughs> I, I, um, one of them was, I would say, the um, transfer um, from Toledo, which is uh, Eli. Um, a lot of people uh, probably don't know him from down here because he's from, you know, Atlanta. Uh, he definitely called my older guy, you know, a mature veteran guy, willing to work, you know, willing to make the sacrifice in order for the team to win, even though he's an older guy coming from, you know, a mid major school like Toledo. He just, I, I just feel like he's invested in our team and what we're trying to do here. So he definitely caught my eye when um when he first got here. And I, I, I do want to go back to one thing. In terms of the experience of last season, and you you all got the, you know, y'all got so much fanfare and the vibe from like alumni and 
you know, the, and, and students. How did that make you feel knowing that our what you experienced as a freshman compared to last season? Oh, it, it felt great because, you know, my freshman year, it was like, like you said, we was picked last, so nobody really mm-hmm. cared, you know, cared about us. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, to see the, the the progression, you know, we were going step by step, but to see the progression, you know, seeing more alumni like y'all trying to, you know, help us, you know, get get the program out there and just to see the love that we're getting as we win, you know, it's tremendous. And, you know, I would love to see it continue, bro, more alumni. You know, just come come watch a game, come to a game, come to homecoming. Just show support because, you know, that, that means a lot to us, especially, you know, alumni that play the game or, or, or used to watch, come to the games or watch basketball. It just means a lot. So seeing more and more fans come, it, it, it's just – we put smiles on our faces, and we're going to put it on the show for y'all. So, And you get them when you travel, too, right? You, you see them when you travel, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? We started to see a lot. A lot That's more awesome. Yeah. Actually. So, you know, that, it's good, you know. Keep coming. Please, alumni. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they showed up for the, for the tournament in Norfolk. But mm-hmm. at Morgan, they was deep. When y'all beat Morgan deep. at Morgan, they was deep out there. To the Morgan game. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So that's a good segue for me because playing games at Morgan, Howard, um, y'all played G-Dub last year. That's where I feel like you really get to play in like, front of your friends and family when you come mm-hmm. back this way. Yeah. How was that experience for you? We already asked you about your PG County swagger, so that's why yeah, I want to yeah. go ahead again. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's kind of the reason why I picked this school. You know, it's, it's closer to home. Then I'm playing schools that's closer to home. So with my family, like my mentors, my old coaches, they come see me play. Like, people that helped me get to where I'm at, you know, playing Division One level. Not, not a lot of people can say they play Division One level, especially out of PG County. Like, that's one of the hardest places to come play Division One basketball out of PG County. So, you know, being, there, being my family and friends coming to see me and then playing against some of my friends that I played with, you know, on GW or teams like that, you know, it's just a, it's something that you always wish for. So. What's your favorite game to come back home and play? What's your what's Howard, Odom, yeah. Howard, Howard, I knew it. I knew it. Howard, Howard Morgan, I would say. Howard Morgan, definitely. Was you said Howard quick, though. He was saying more. Yeah, yeah, it was. He was Howard. Howard. It's always, always a good vibe at Howard every time. <laughs> hey, hey, we got love for Howard, but Howard put they, they eliminated y'all and the girls, yeah. man. So we 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 gotta get that get back this season. We're so. gonna, we gonna get that get back for sure. Right? <laughs> man, get get back. I love it, That's man. Hey. Hey man, this has been dope. Before we let you go, is there anything you would like to add? Oh uh, no, I would. Um, one thing I would like to add, you know, for for the uh, people that's watching, you know, just continue to support us. You know, continue to come out and, and, and watch the games. You know, same for the alumni. Please come back. You know, it doesn't have to just be basketball. It can be for a bowling team or or track mm-hmm. team. Just come back and show love and support to the school because you know we need it, and you know the the, the student athletes would definitely appreciate it. I'll say this in terms of basketball, the, the the men and women, you all are doing a great job. Folks have been supporting you all, uh, I know, uh, on this side of town. And just keep up the great work. Yeah, you, you have great mentors in, turn, in terms of your coaches. And for you, Coach Bachelor, for the girls, Coach – I mean, for you, Coach Crafton, for the girls, Coach Bachelor. So, y'all keep it up, man. Y'all doing great work for real. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate y'all having me on the, the HBCU corner. <laughs> I love it, man. Sure, hey, bro. All right, bro, you stay blessed, man. Thank you. Okay, no problem.